Welcome to HortTube, where we talk all things gardening. My name is Jim Putnam, and I'm gonna do a quick video at the Garden Center on full sun foundation plants. It's very sunny out today, so these yellow plants are gonna seem even brighter than they normally are. Uh, this is a uh, variegated abelia. Uh, these have become very popular. There's a lot of varieties. There's kaleidoscope and confetti and several others. It seems like every time somebody sees one that has a slightly different variegation, they run out and patent it very quickly. But they are great plants, and they're easy to keep in that two to three foot tall range. They will get a little wider than that, maybe three to four feet. I've got some Gold Mound Spirea, which are just leafing out. These actually lose their leaves in the winter time. But as long as you have an evergreen backdrop to them, they're fantastic. They're one of the last things that lose their leaves. They get the great fall color, extremely cold hardy, grow practically all the way to Canada. And they'll bloom in a few weeks. The flower's a pinkish cluster. It really doesn't show up that well in the foliage. It's really uh, more of a foliage plant than a flowering plant. Uh, I've got some soft touch hollies. Soft touch hollies are probably become the most popular low growing Japanese hollies. Uh, they're very, very easy to keep two foot tall and maybe two to three feet in width. We have some firepower nandinas. Firepower nandinas are the ones that turn bright red in the winter time. They're honestly not my favorite. Uh, they're bright red for about two months and that seems to me to be their only redeeming quality. I really prefer this one back here called Harbor Dwarf. And I have several other varieties as well, but we sell a lot of Firepower Nandina. A lot of people do like the fact that they turn red for that 60 days or so. This is a plant right here I used on my own foundation, which is a Carissa Holly. A perfect little three to four foot tall dome, maybe three to four foot wide as well. Really indestructible, very easy. It does poke you a little bit, but you really don't ever have to prune it, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't bury like the other hollies. You'll occasionally see a barrier or two on it, but it's not what it's for. It's just me, a shiny, evergreen, low-growing dome. Here's some dwarf yopon hollies, which are, yopon hollies are actually native. This is a dwarf yopon. Perfect little low dome. This plant will grow anywhere. Sun, shade, deer won't eat it. It's a great plant, and if you think you if you think you're not a very good gardener, this is a plant for you. And really, this should be the test. If you kill a dwarf yopon holly, you should probably change hobbies. We've got Daruma loripetalum. This is a dwarf loripetalum. This one only gets two and a half, maybe three and a half foot tall and a little wider than tall. Uh, loripetalum have really changed since I've been in this business. They used to all get 25 feet tall and now we actually have a prostrate one that grows flat to the ground. But Daruma is very, very popular and it's not patented, so you don't have to mortgage your house to actually buy them. This is Hugendorn holly here. I did a video on these, you'll wanna watch that one. This is absolutely one of my favorite low growing Japanese hollies. Really, really great self-maintaining plant. Uh, this is Hellari next to it. Hellari's been around for a long time. Gets very wide and stays low. It's less popular now. Soft touch has really taken a lot of the sales away from Hellari because soft touch is easier to keep narrow. This plant is called Sunshine Ligustrum. It is a new gold foliage privet. And privet will scare some people because number one, they seed themselves all over the place and they tend to just have all kinds of funky things going on with them. This plant is fantastic. It's actually a sterile variety, so it won't seed itself and it's gold like this all the time. It does require some occasional pruning on it to keep the best gold foliage. It can actually reach head high, but it's really super easy to keep this plant three or four feet in height. Can't keep this plant in now. This, this plant sells like crazy. It is the brightest yellow foliage in the spring of any plant. We've got some ruby loripetalum, which this one will get six to eight feet tall but it's pretty easy to keep it in the four to five foot range over a long period of time. So if you have a wall that doesn't have windows, this is a great choice. I think it always has the best foliage on it because it has it's green in the middle. Some people want them purple throughout, but the two-tone appearance of Ruby is fantastic. It's got this purple with that green together. And then of course it gets the pink flowers twice a year as well. Got Japanese boxwoods. You know, these are gonna get in the could probably get six feet over time, but slow growing. So they're super, super easy to keep much smaller than that. And if you have deer, you definitely want to use boxwoods instead of hollies. These are compacta hollies. This is what everybody calls 
boxwoods now because all the builders use them because they're much less expensive than boxwoods. So this is what's on most of the foundations on new houses is compacta hollies. Here's some frost proof gardenias. This plant may be our best selling plant overall. It's a perfect little three to four foot dome. It'll flower here in a few weeks. It's actually budded up now in early April. Usually flowers around the 1st of May. This is Crimson Fire Laura Petalum. This is the one I was talking about that's basically prostrate. This is an amazing little plant. You can keep this plant probably less than two feet tall permanently, maybe three foot in width. Great plant, a pinkish red flower on it. It's a much redder flower than the, most of the other varieties that are pink. Uh, this is Climbs Hardy Gardenia. A very, very hardy variety. It has a single flower rather than a double, and that turns some people off for some reason, but it flowers about twice as much as the other variety, so it definitely makes up for that. It smells the same, and will be quite showy here in about a week or two. Here's some gold mop cypress down here. These can eventually reach eight feet in height, but are extremely slow growing, and most people can easily maintain these in the three to four foot height range. This is Globosa nana cryptomeria. This is a perfect little round ball. Didn't have to prune this at all to make this happen. It eventually become a four foot round ball if you let it. Pretty easy to shear this plant and keep it three by three. Here's some Viburnum tinus, which bloomed a couple weeks ago. I think I've talked about this in another video. We'll, we'll get some uh, late winter damage on it sometimes, but it's a great, great foundation plant. This to me is really the ultimate foundation plant. This is Eleanor Tabor, Indian Hawthorn. Unfortunately, zone seven is about as high as it goes up to, but in zone seven to nine, this is just such a great plant. These pink flowers on it right now, it'll have purple berries on it later. A lot of the Indian Hawthorns have foliar disease issues, and this one's very, very resistant to it. This is Silver King Euonymus, has a white variegation on the edge of the leaf. Will end up quite tall, but narrow, so it's great on the corner or a place along the side of a window. And this is Golden Euonymus, which is similar to that Silver King, except for it has yellow rather than the off-white variegation. So that's a few choices for full sun foundations. I'll cover some shade plants for foundations in another video. And I'm also going to try to, at some point to separate. This one will grow in zone five, this one will grow in zone six, this one will grow in zone seven. I'm gonna lay them out on the parking lot in a couple weeks in that way. And that way folks in the different zones can see the foundation plants that are just for your particular zone. Thanks for watching.